Welcome to the CEO of Destiny podcast, where you will find the tools to fulfill the purpose of your generation and wildly succeed in the marketplace. And now your host, Andre J. Benjamin. Talk about wealth creation and kind of like the value of that and the jobs versus work and whatnot, how, to, how that is. Oh man, let me tell you that, that retirement is, it's a fantasy, right? Like I thought, oh man, I, my goal was to retire by 40. And my, before my 40th birthday, I sold this company and I'm like, man, I'm ready to retire. This is going to be great. And it was fun for about three months. And then you realize, wait a minute, man, all my friends, I'm like, you want to go watch a movie? No, I got to go to work. Yeah, that's right? Right. Hey, you want You want You know, only so many Mai Tais you could drink on the beach before it's like, yes. I'm kind of sick of Mai Tais. I'm sick of not having my community, my tribe, my purpose. Right? Yeah. When I wake up, what's my purpose? And so um, I helped founded a, a, a wealth management company called Full Sail Capital. We manage, uh, this is our third year. We're at $1.6 billion that we manage. And uh, fiduciary, I was like, look, man, I, I don't want to get screwed over and I don't want our clients to get screwed over. I want us to treat this like a family office. I don't want you to manage my money, but I want you to manage all these other people's money. And so uh, I got my parents, you know, I was like, mom, we're, we need to have an honest conversation, right? How much money do you have and where is it? And she said, we have a savings account. Okay, cool. You have any investments? No. I was like, all right, let me, let me get you involved with my team. And I was like, look, my parents don't qualify for the minimum amount, but we're going to need to hook them up. So let's get it in there. One year goes by, my dad goes, hey, son, why didn't you tell us to do this years ago? <laughs> he goes, we made more in those investments than we did in our business. I said, wow. this is the game. And the problem is the only game we've ever known is just to work. Yeah. Right. And what I'm learning now is the money can work for you. Yes. Right. You find the right partners and the money will work for you. So, you know, I own a dozen different companies. Uh, I've sold some again. Some are about to get sold for even more than what I built. And it doesn't get me excited. And I know that sounds real like, what's this guy? I got no problems. <laughs> Everybody got problems, right? But yeah. money doesn't solve everything. And no. so I find myself, I, I actually just got accepted this past weekend back into school. Let's and go. I'm going to go finish a marriage and family counseling degree. Congrats. And I want to open a practice where we only work with founders and entrepreneurs. Oh, We well, have a very unique set of challenges in our lives. And I'm finding that a lot of counselors, they're not my peer. No. You know, they're, they're seduced by, wait a minute, how much did you sell the car for or a company for? And what yeah. kind of cars do you have? And where'd you go on your trips? And I'm like, man, that has nothing to do with why I'm here today. It's good. Right? And so I want to be able to have a person, a patient that's in my office that sees me as a peer and says, all right, this guy is not BSing me, right? This, yeah. he's, he's trying to help me. Before. He's, he's been, been there before. Yep. He's yep. dealt with this. Yep. That's been up that mountain. When did you discover that that was a passion for you? And you saw, cause I mean, you, I mean, you share with me offline prior, but I'm saying like your, your marriage is still intact. I mean, that's, yeah. that's huge. You, and you, be 23 years. That, and you're, how many years? 23. Let's go. Congrats. That's Thank very you. noble. We're at uh, 15. This is our 16th year. I hope I'm right, honey. So don't judge me. <laughs> I'm working on the plot. But, <laughs> but you got 23 years. Um, you you guys have a child if I who's an adult. Yeah. And um, the fact that they don't hate your guts and <laughs> that you you have rapport with them. This is This is something to be said for someone when you talk about this need for this, what you're going to school for. It's very important. Can you, can you speak to that about some of the pitfalls you see of founders and almost being married to the business and then the marriage ended messed up and everything and no judgment on them, not saying that people don't have their own things, but can you kind of talk about what really worked well for you or what you started to see as prioritizing? Cause I love the fact that unlike other, other people that I know that that point, when you talked about even back, going back to what you're first child being born or she being pregnant and the you teaching a lot of people wouldn't have pivoted they would have been like this is we're building something who cares and she's like no i need you to make sure i need this kid to be able to sleep i need to be able to get my rest and not be at your neck so you set boundaries early on can you talk about why that was important to you and kind of what has worked best some best practices that you found personally well i think one of the best practices is open communication right yeah. I, I use this phrase often. 
we need to have an uncomfortable conversation. Wow. Right. If it's uncomfortable, just start with that. And I train that to all my employees. I tell them, take it home and teach your, you know, your significant others. This is, this is how we have this kind of open communication. And um, it really, you know, look, I, I'm not a saint by any means, man. I, I worked, I would spend the night at the office if I had to, like, it's just whatever it takes. Right. Um, but I did tell my wife after we sold the company, I said, look, I'll be honest with you for 14 years, I've been cheating on you. And it's this mistress called digital tutors. Yeah. And when she calls me, I got to go and man, she's going to bleed us dry out of cash and probably leave me single. And right. Cause I was so all in that I, even if it went South, I wouldn't have seen it. I just believed, right. As a lot of people do. And so, um, I told her, look, what, what can I do to give that time back to you? And so every Friday we spend Friday together and it's just, I'm going to give you every Friday, right? We're, and you know what? We don't need to have an office open four to five days a week. We'll be open four days a week. Good. But Fridays are your days. And so uh, I think making time, quality time, um, for a period of time there, I didn't have a computer in my home. No laptop, nothing. And it was like, wow. look, I get it. But I'm trying to help my employees have this balance of 26 hours, yet I'm going to justify working 80. Yeah. Right? So I got to take my own medicine. And my medicine was no computers in the house. And if I don't have a computer in the house, I can't fix your problem right now. And guess what? I'm not saving babies or dolphins. So we can wait till the morning. So what What was the, so that's huge right there. I mean, that that is right now, that's, somebody's going to cut the interview off at that point. Yeah, they're, they're like, this guy crazy. <laughs> yeah. what, talk about that detox. And uh, what did you notice in that process? Because it's okay. You know, uh, most of us don't realize that we're connected to th this at the hip. We've got multiples of every, you know what I mean? And how much it's, you know, now Apple is, I don't know if it, they're doing it for their own reasons, but at the end of the week, they show you like, you've had this much time, you're down by this much, or you're up by this much. Can you talk about how that felt the to, go, to go through that detox? And um, I, who is it that uh, uh, talks about the... Uh, email or becoming a, a nomad now or a minimalist someone in uh one of the books i read he also wrote a book on focus that was tremendous but anyway talk about that about that process of moving those out of your home why did you do it and how did it feel and was it difficult like don't just let's not just fly over uh, there instant difficulty are you kidding me it's like uh, what, here's the big takeaway. What I realized where the, the office is burning down and the whole world is going to end was, uh, somebody lit a match. Okay, cool. But they burned the place down. No. Oh, no big deal. No big deal. And it was like that 24 hours a day. So eliminating all that allowed me to think bigger. Right. So, um, you talk about a job and work. Oftentimes when you find your work, you still fill it with lots of little jobs. Good. And those jobs just keep us busy. Like, yeah, look, I'm involved, man. Look, I got 84 emails today. I know, but most of it's garbage, yeah. right? Most of them don't even need a reply. And but but I got to go check my email right now, right? And I and I'm not a saint by any means. I I'm tethered to this thing, right? Like, I'm still tethered to it. And I, and I think we all were working on it. But there was a window of time where for about a year and a half, I said no more. And let me tell you, the time I got to think about the business was different. The time I got to have with my kid was different. My wife was different. So we weren't in front of screens. We were together. And that's when those ideas happen, right? I hold, I hold a Monday uh, long-time ritual called McNelly's Monday. It's pretty much come have a beer with the CEO. Don't matter what department you're in, I'll be at this bar at six o'clock after work. Come have a happy hour. We'll just stick around for a beer and let's just talk. Most of the times they want to talk about video games or movies. And that's cool. I love talking about that. But oftentimes somebody will come in and say, you know, hey, I've been thinking about, you know, X, Y, Z setup. What if we did it this way? Yeah, you should totally run with it. They could have brought that up anytime, but I created some space, right? No phones, no tech, just us grabbing a beer and hanging out. And so I wasn't creating those spaces for myself personally. So once you created those margins, you had the clarity you had to, right. you were able to actually work on your work instead of, uh, you know, being so in the business that you couldn't. Right. And then you co comprehensively as a person, the joy now that you see of actually being, I'm, uh, we have three children, 12, 
eight and um, uh, uh, five. And I know that I think that's the greatest gift of children and it feels like a curse to an adult that's so addicted to doing things is that they make you be present. They're like, my, you know, my son's like, dad, I'm, I, can you play this video game with me? Dad, what are you doing? We're losing. Dad, are you? And dad's thinking about what he's got, his deal he's got to close. Dad's got to, but being actually in the moment, being with my five-year-old and she's, you know, it just, it slows you down. Can, can you talk about how you ended up, why did you end up starting um, basically a wealth management firm? Why was that important to you? And especially now when we're talking about inflation, uh, the, the eradication or the, the ending of fiat as it looks, it looks like the, we're, we won't see, I don't know, where, where, where are things going? The printing press keeps burning, but there's no backing for it. So I don't know what the, where things are going, you know, inflation and all this, how, how do you hedge you know, some, and I know this is not investment advice. He is not giving you the, the huge disclaimer. He's not giving you investment advice. No. We're just talking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, you sell your company and it hits the news. The phone starts ringing. Absolutely. People smell blood in the water. Oh, man, we're going to make some money. I don't get this guy. Right? <laughs> so, you know, we took a lot of calls and um, we had a lot of meetings. And I, and I quickly figured out, okay, you all are playing from the same script, right? Everybody got the same garbage they're trying to sell, yeah. and they're going to try to make you a lot more money than what you started with. I get it. I get all that. And then I met uh, my friend David Stanley, and he came in, and he said, look, work with us or not, go look at your retirement accounts. If the account has the name, parentheses, A, parentheses, you're getting screwed. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I was like, hey, by the way, what makes you guys different than the other five people we met with? And he's like, well, I'm going to be at your most important events. I'll be at your kid's graduation. I'll be at your kid's wedding. I'll be at your funeral. And on that day, I'll help your kid navigate this world. Wow. And I was like, really? He goes, oh, and if you ever need underwear, you call me. I'll come deliver underwear. I go, what do you mean by that? He goes, I got an 85-year-old client that called me and said, David, nobody's home and I need underwear. Can you buy me underwear? I'm absolutely on my way. Wow. And I was like, okay, that's, that's, that's kind of going above and beyond, but I'm going to check on that. Sure enough, the feedback's like, this guy loves his clients. Whatever you need, he's going to take care of you, right? He's really your family office manager. And then I went home and I was like, Lisa, can you pull up those accounts, all of our retirement accounts, and even for our employees? And man, every one of them had a parentheses A. Wow. And we didn't have, we weren't making any money. It's like, we've had these things for 10 years and we've been screwed every year. And we just didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't have a background in that. So I sunk my teeth in, went with my man, David. And one day at lunch, I said, look, you generate wealth for lots of people. Yet you got a job. So if you ever want to make the jump, I want to back it and be your partner. And he's like, are you kidding me? I was like, look, man, you are no longer my peer in this situation. You should be my peer. You should be generating wealth for yourself so you understand what I'm going through. And he's like, nobody's ever said it that way. And about a year later, he called me and said, okay, let's do it. I was like, let's do it. And so, you know, we started with nothing. In that world, you can't take anybody. We start with nothing. And um, almost three years now, we're at $1.6 billion. Let's go. What would you say for people right now that are seeing inflation skyrocket and they're looking at the future and they're saying, I mean, what do I, you know, this, <laughs> the markets are interesting to say the least. And then the leadership and the moves that people are making and kind of the, the future and the world uncertainty with all the, the news that comes because people are doing other non-traditional things that, that they're calling assets, such as, you know, cryptocurrency and uh, e even this new thing I'm hearing, uh, digital real estate and NFTs and all these type of things. What are your thoughts on these? And what would you say to people that are feeling concerned about the price of goods going up um, and, you know, not knowing what to do with how that they could see everything that they have evaporate in a year's time? Thank you for listening to today's episode. Do us a favor. If this was useful in any way for you, please go to iTunes and leave us a review. Reviews will allow others to easily discover the podcast. 
If you'd like more information and to receive a free download, rediscover your destiny, go to CEOofDestiny.com. Thanks again and tune in next time.